You are listening to episode 24 of the Mom on Purpose podcast. Today we're talking with author and speaker Linda Dillo about the idea of embracing sexual intimacy as godly and good. Welcome to Mom on Purpose podcast. If this is your first time listening, thanks for coming. The Mom on Purpose podcast is produced every week. Come back often and please subscribe in iTunes. All links and materials referenced are in the show notes, which you'll find at momonpurpose.com. Every Mom on Purpose episode begins with a quick mom verse designed for your encouragement. Today's verse goes along with last week's verse. It's Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Last week, we talked about the works of the flesh, but today I want to talk about the works of the Spirit, the evidence that the Spirit of God is at work in our lives. Galatians 5 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The Spirit of God can produce these things in you. This is not a personality thing. We are not to look at people who have a sweet personality and say, wow, she's such a neat lady. I could never be like her. Because the truth is, regardless of our personality, this list is what the Spirit of God can produce in our hearts. And Mama, He can help you do this and walk it out with your children. Listen again to the list of things that He can produce in you. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. As you mother your children today, look for ways that God will produce these things in and through you. All right, Mom and Purpose listeners, today's interview is part two of our conversation with Linda Dillo. And if you are not familiar with Linda, I just want to tell you that she has been a great encouragement to me in my life through books like Calm My Anxious Heart and Intimate Issues. I will link to her in the show notes, so come and check it out. But she is an author of over a dozen books. She was a missionary. She's just a wonderful woman of God. I just cannot wait to share this with you. It is our prayer that this would not only bless you today, but that the things that you hear would shape your heart and your thinking and your marriage and echo out into the decades to come and even into eternity. I also want to specify that this conversation is really intended for married women. And so if you are not married, you are free to listen, but there may be things that you need to stop and not listen to. And I ask you to listen to the Spirit of God inside of you and stop yourself if there's material that you just don't feel that you're ready to hear. There's no shame in it, but we want this conversation to be a blessing and an encouragement to Christian women, not an error on their conscience. So with that, let me introduce you to Linda Dillo. Well then, so I've got a big question for you. I I know what your answer is going to be, but I'm just going to ask it and I want you to tell us why. Is it okay for a Christian wife to be sexy and to enjoy sex with her husband? I'm going to have to rephrase that. Can I rephrase it? Yeah, for sure. I, I'm not going to say, okay, I'm going to say it is absolutely wonderful <laughs> yeah. for a Christian wife mm. to be sexy and enjoy sex with her husband mm. because God has said that in his word mm. and he's given us a portrait of it in the Song of Solomon and he's said it in other places of scripture and he wants our lovemaking to be fun and abandoned and beautiful and be a place of refreshment Mm. uh, to both the husband and the wife. Well, share with us, how did you come to believe these things? What are some of the scriptures that you're referring to? If a listener is is sitting there and going, okay, I'm hungry for this. Tell me where, how did you come to believe these things? Jess, I became a Christian when I was 20. And um, I grew up with a wonderful mother and an abusive alcoholic father. And I can remember my father being drunk and 
getting my mother from where she was sleeping in another bed in the room with my brother and dragging my mother into the bedroom at three in the morning Mm -hmm. and thinking, oh, I think I know why he's doing that. Mm -hmm. So that was my introduction to sex. Mm -hmm. And I hated my father. Mm -hmm. One of the first things the Lord had to do was teach me about forgiveness and bring me to a point of forgiving my father. Uh, He took a lot of his anger in drunken rages out on me. And um, I despised him. Mm. And God wanted me to forgive him. Uh, And when a girl grows up without a father or with a father like mine, she really looks for affirmation from guys And the only way I can describe myself is I was a big flirt Mm. and I had lots of boyfriends and really wanted attention from guys Mm. and I made wrong choices. I didn't understand what God wanted in marriage and what it was supposed to look like. And so I really went to the word. I got married very young at 21 Mm. and we were still in college and we were both new Christians Mm. and, uh, we did not know. And we both had made some wrong choices. We both knew too much. Mm. And so we went to God's word and, Uh, Some of it confused us, Mm. but we just kept looking. Mm -hmm. And I I learned a lot from places like Proverbs 5 that Solomon wrote to his son, the first 14 verses, telling him to stay away from seeking sexual pleasure any place except with his wife. Yes. And he says very strongly... If you are attracted to another woman, don't even go down the street where she lives Mm -hmm. uh, because this will lead to death. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, he wasn't talking a physical death or there'd be a lot of dead husbands and wives lying around. Mm -hmm. He's talking about an emotional death, Mm -hmm. the death of your children. Mm -hmm. It's very strong. Just stay far away. And then he says in verses 15 through 19, where you're to seek sexual pleasure. Mm -hmm. And he paints a very beautiful picture and says, drink water from your own cistern and fresh water from your own well. Mm -hmm. In verse 18, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. Mm -hmm. As a loving hind and a graceful doe, let her breasts satisfy you at all times. Mm. Be exhilarated always with her love. So he paints this beautiful picture of water that a wife is to be like a bubbling fountain Mm. of fresh water. And just like cold, fresh water refreshes Mm. our thirst yes on a hot dusty day a wife's sexual love is to refresh her husband and it's to be a beautiful refreshment mm. and it says that the husband's fountain is to be blessed and you know it seems like god talks about breasts in the bible because mm. he says he that her breasts are to satisfy the husband at all times and that he is to be exhilarated, um, ravished, intoxicated always Mm -hmm. with her sexual love. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would look at things like that and that did not say that I was to be a little bit involved it said that I would be an overflowing fountain of love for my husband. Yes. 
And, you know, it spoke to me, Jess, when it said, satisfy at all times and exhilarate always because there are seasons of life. When I had three tiny children, I can remember saying to the Lord, God, I know I can't put a sexual relationship up on a shelf until the kids get older. Yes. Show me how to be creative. Mm. Show me what to do. And, you know, one thing, one idea he gave to me was on a Saturday morning, I hired a babysitter to take the three children to a park Mm. two blocks away from our house. And I gave them all sorts of healthy snacks and asked they stay away for two hours. Mm. Now, That was so I could be alone with my husband in our house in the morning when I had energy. Mm -hmm. And we know that that worked maybe a fourth of the time or a fifth of the time. I had a child with asthma. You know, it didn't work all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Children were sick. Um, My husband traveled some. I mean, it just didn't work. But the fact that I tried to plan it, it worked sometimes. Mm. And I think what God did for me, because he showed me in this passage and in many other passages, what he wanted my attitude to be. I would say to my husband, honey, I want to be with you. I want us to be together. Mm. We're going to find a time. And so we would laugh just at how hard sometimes it was to find a time Mm -hmm. because the baby was sick and was right there. Mm -hmm. And the baby was the first priority Mm -hmm. or whatever. But when you know that you're both looking and waiting, Mm -hmm. it even builds anticipation. Yes. It's a different attitude than stay away from me. I'm too tired. Mm -hmm. I have too much responsibility. Mm -hmm. I'm not available. Mm -hmm. And so when we had four teenagers and we lived in Europe Mm -hmm. and we rented our house, Mm -hmm. I said, God, they stay up too late and I can't outlast them. Uh And they're too curious. We went to our landlord and said, would you be willing to pay for the lumber and what's necessary to build a bedroom in the attic if we built it and we had a friend that was going to help us do it? Mm -hmm. And so we built us our own separate little place Mm -hmm. up on the third floor, Mm -hmm. and um, she paid for it, and... We gave a special gift to our friend who did most of the work. But, you know, you look for how can I make this work? Mm -hmm. And every time as a wife we do something like that, we're saying to our husbands, this area of our marriage is important. And I am going to fulfill satisfying you at all times Mm -hmm. and always And I am going to make this a priority because it's important for both of us. Mm -hmm. And it adds sparkle to our relationship. Yes. You've talked about it being a priority, and I I completely agree. What would you say is the number one reason that sex slips down on the priority list? Especially, let's, let's talk about, just like you've been talking about, as a mom, What's the reasons why sex slips down on that priority list? You know, our lives are just hectic, Jess. I I mean, some of the young women I know homeschool, and then some of them, their kids are involved in so many activities. I mean, I have grandchildren who are on high-level soccer teams and they practice four nights a week and then have games all weekend. Mm. I mean, I see exactly why there's no time. Mm. The kids' activities, but my husband and I have always been in ministry and it's people's needs. It's, you know, uh, we were going to have some special time together last night and one of our close friends 
is in the hospital, and we got the call last night that she has a very serious form of cancer Mm -hmm. and probably has one to five years to live. And she's a young woman. Mm -hmm. And so our plans are no longer there. We're at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be at the hospital again today. I'm going to be cooking for them. There are things that do take priority, Mm -hmm. but you have to say, we are going to find time because this is important too. Yes. Uh, Life and death situations, of course, take precedence. Mm -hmm. But when you're deeply involved in people's lives, there can be a lot of those Mm -hmm. type of things. Yes. Deep marriage problems. The Mm -hmm. night before that, my friend who just left her husband was falling apart, mm-hmm. and I was over at her house. I mean, it, you can let it be every night, mm-hmm. either with the kids or with other people's problems. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just have to say, no. Mm-hmm. I can remember Dr. Howard Hendricks, who was one of my husband's professors in seminary and mm-hmm. someone we deeply respected He said, we would just say this night, unless it was a life and death emergency, this light night is for us. Mm -hmm. And we would say no to everything else. Mm -hmm. And you do that unless it is a life and death emergency Mm -hmm. or unless one of your eight children is sick. And, (laughs) you know, those things happen so often. You just keep trying. You know, I wrote in my Bible, I wrote where I could see it every day, pray, plan, persevere, Mm. because you've got to persevere. Mm. But you've got to have it in your mind that this is important to God. Mm. It's important to God. And the problem is your intimacy is important to Satan. Mm. He wants to destroy it. Mm. And so you have got to just keep persevering. Mm. And yes, because I'm older, I can say this to the young moms. Mm. If there never is time, you need to reevaluate your lives. Mm. Yes. And you need to say, are the kids involved in too many things? Mm-hmm. Are we involved in too many things? They're probably all good things. Mm. But if we don't ever have any time for each other, Mm -hmm. just laugh together Mm -hmm. and be alone together and have fun together Mm -hmm. and talk together and and love one another's bodies and and just just lie together in one another's arms and talk together, Mm -hmm. then there's something wrong. Yeah. That's right. We For us, we've had to, I was thinking, how did we go about these things? And really for us, intimacy is now, um, I would say our default position. We, like you've said, there's life or death things that can, can overcome that for a short season, but our, our baseline, our default is to have regular purposeful times together as a couple, Mm -hmm. um, and and we've we have exactly what you're saying. We do not participate in all the sports. We don't commit to everything. We we do have to tell people no and and that's hard to discern. And yet, as a wife, even before we get to the as a mom part, as a wife, I know for certain that out of all the things that I can put on my plate, God has put one specific thing on my plate, which is loving and caring and 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 being sexual with my husband. That is a, an absolute thing that God has put there. And so from my perspective, I've, I've loved the plate analogy. It really helps me in life, but I don't feel like I'm free to shove off that part and add in other things onto my plate. <laughs> I, I have to eat the beginning. I have to at least start with that. And then I can occasionally add in other things, but I'm not free to shove off that central piece and in order to pile other things on my plate that God hasn't put there. Yeah, no, it's true. I remember one couple who said to me, 
what works for us is that we schedule sex. And I thought, Mm -hmm. oh, that sounds boring. Uh (laughs) But the way she described it, she said, you know, we work in the same office. And so we, we make it fun. My husband will say to me, honey, remember... We have that important appointment Friday at lunch, uh-huh. <laughs> and nobody in the office will know what we're talking about, uh-huh. or we'll set the alarm for six twenty-five. Mm. You know, on a Monday morning. I mm-hmm. thought, oh, I don't think I'd like that one, but <laughs> they they will circle on their calendars mm-hmm. or on their iPhones certain certain dates on their calendar Mm. that only they know what they mean. Mm. And she said for them, it builds anticipation. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, there's no right or wrong. It's what works for you as a couple. Mm. But like you said, that needs to be one of the first things on your plate. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. How can a listener overcome the challenges, especially of of busyness, but also, you know, we've talked about shame. We've talked about other things. How can she make this ministry a priority? You've mentioned prayer. You've mentioned the potential for scheduling. How how can a wife make it a priority in her life? I think just that many women have never really taken the time to study the scriptures Mm -hmm. And this last week, I've gotten together with three groups that were studying in a Bible study uh, a course that Dr. Julie Slattery and I wrote called Passion Pursuit. Yes. And and they just said, this is changing our intimacy. Mm. And it's it's changing the way we think. Mm. And it's... and. I think sometimes God wants us to spend a season um, in God's Word and really um, with with some women mm. studying and saying, "Okay, God, this is the time for me to really get this right." Mm-hmm. And uh, just because I was there with these young women and they were talking about that this week, I think that's one thing I would suggest. Yes. And I'm sure there are other things they could do beside that, but just something that would get them in God's word mm. and get their mind there so they can focus there and start some new patterns in their life. Yes. Yeah, because the uh, scripture tells us in Romans, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And one of the best ways to renew our minds is to take off and actually acknowledge what our perspective is and, and compare it side by side to what scripture says and say, okay, Lord, in all those places where my vision is off, I want you to transform my mind and my eyes so that I see the world through the perspective of your word. That's wonderful. I know I, I wanted to talk with you more. Can you share share about this um, this course that you've created or the or the study you've created, this passion pursuits? So I'd like for you to talk about that. Um, I don't know if you've ever had Julie on your your podcast. No, but I haven't. I I hope sometimes she could be on with you, but. Julie Slattery and I wrote this. She used to be voice, the psychologist on Focus on the Family. Okay. And then we started a ministry together called Authentic Intimacy. Mm-hmm. And um, we're commissioned by uh, three men in New, in New Zealand huh. to write a course on sex for women. <laughs> I have to tell you this part because it's so funny and it's so typical of men. There's There was a course written in Australia for men. Mm. And they and these three women, these three men wanted a course for women. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they got together for two days to talk about how they, these three men, could write this course for women. (laughs) And the second day, one of the men looked at the others and said, you know, there's one thing wrong here. None of us are women. Mm -hmm. And I thought it took them a whole day to figure that out. (laughs) And so 
thought who they started praying who could write this course. Mm. And Dr. Julie Slattery, who was with Focus on the Family at that time, had been down speaking in New Zealand and they heard her on the radio. So they called her and said, would you be willing to write this course? Mm. And uh, she said, well, I've just been sensing that God had something new he wanted me to do, Mm. but I would want a woman I know to write it with me. Mm. And when they found out how old I was, they, they were afraid for me to write about sex Mm. because I was the age of their mothers Uh and they couldn't (laughs) imagine their mothers talking about sex. Uh So one of them flew here to meet me. Uh And I guess I passed approval because they they said, you two write, and they paid for the whole thing and the production mm. of the videos, mm. and because they really wanted the course. Mm. <clears throat> but as it was written, it became obvious it wasn't just for New Zealand and Australia, and Moody Press published it, and um, published it with really fun um drawings, pictures in the workbook, and it's a video with a workbook and a 10-week Bible study course that really gets women into God's Word Mm. and is and is fun, but it's holy and it's um it's enlightening. Mm. And Julie and I are two different generations. And we are, our backgrounds are very different. Mm -hmm. She comes from a godly Christian home and Mm -hmm. I didn't. So uh, we have different perspectives. And so God, 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 it was God's idea and he put it together. Mm. That's great. Renewing our minds with God's word. That's what we all need in every area. Um, But I think this area is unique because our community, I think, is still learning about how to talk about these things without being worldly about it, without taking on the patterns of the world, but yet acknowledging God created sex. It was his idea. <laughs> like you said, he could have done a million different ways. Uh, he could have had hand-holding be the highest expression of, right, exactly. of physical pleasure, but he didn't. And so, uh, yeah, so renewing our minds through Scripture. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if a woman has been listening to us and is sitting there thinking our sex life is nothing like what Linda is describing and I feel hopeless, what is one specific action step that she could take today? Jess, God wants to give her hope Hope is one of God's names. He is a God of hope. And the first thing I would encourage you to do is just to go to God and say, God, you know exactly what I'm feeling. I just feel without hope. And you're the God of hope. Would you just show me the first step to take? Would you would you give me hope? And Lord, I'm going to take a step. And would you just show me what to do? Mm. And I, I would encourage her to talk to her best friend and to listen to the podcast again with the best friend and say, okay, can, will you study something with me or Mm. can we get a group together to study something? Mm. I would ask God and I would ask my best friend or my small group or whatever and just say, let's do something together to transform our minds and to set some new patterns in our lives. Mm. And because we are changed, just like you quoted from Romans 12, Jess. We're changed by the renewing of our mind. Mm-hmm. And and every one of us needs our mind renewed in this area. Mm-hmm. So it might even be a little scary for someone to say, okay, I'm going to take a step forward because that might mean that God wants to change me or mm-hmm. I might 
I mean, one of the one of the young women in one of the groups I was with this week, she said, I was afraid to say anything out loud about this subject. So <laughs> I would write a little note to my husband and then he would answer it. Uh-huh. And she said, but when I started studying this, I realized God talked about it. Yes. And I we could talk about it together. Mm-hmm. And we needed to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the one of the things we talk about with young couples is getting over that hump of the fear of talking about it and how awkward yeah. it will feel at first. But the truth is it's awkward to talk about a lot of things if you're going to be purposeful about it. The it's easy yeah. to fall into the patterns of the world and it is hard to take a step back and say you know what, we're not going to schedule something for our family every night of the week. That That's a more purposeful stance. And it is just as hard, and, and I think harder because of the shame and some of the things we've talked about, to be purposeful in this area. But it is so worth it. It is so beneficial to, to push past those points of shame and decide, you know what, I'm going to claim this area with my husband for God's glory. That's exactly right. And and just um, somehow it adds sweetness to the rest of the relationship. Mm-hmm. Sex isn't the most important thing, mm-hmm. but it adds a sweetness mm-hmm. to the whole relationship. It does. And it, it gives refreshment mm-hmm. to you as a couple. And just it's like the icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. It is. Well, which of your resources, I, I pulled up a list here of all the books and, and studies and videos that you've, uh, that you've done, and I'm going to link to the one that we've already talked about. Um, is that the one you would highlight, or would you highlight some other resources for Christian moms to, to grow in their understanding and embrace of this ministry of sexual intimacy with their husband? Um. I think that what I've already talked about, Passion Pursuit, um, Intimate Issues is a book that they can read by themselves. Mm. Passion Pursuit is more interactive, and um, I would recommend both. And then the book, What's It Like to Be Married to Me? Mm. And that has a section called What's It Like to Make Love with Me? Mm. Ooh. <laughs> that is good. I that title actually um I thought man just the the title is very convicting. <laughs> I've had some women throw it in the trash. Oh. But you know then they always go and get it out <laughs> and say okay God why? do you know it isn't in a condemning way it's mm. more in a in a psalm 139 way that we're told we're supposed to search our hearts. Yes. And and that we are just to ask God to search our hearts. Mm. And we spend a lot of time as wives um, thinking about how our husbands need to change. Mm. And this is just being willing to say, okay, God, I need to look at my own attitude and I need to just spend some time looking at myself and asking you to speak to me. Mm, that's so wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to get that book. I haven't, I, that's one I haven't read, so I'm going to get it. Um, well, I will link to all of those that you've mentioned in the show notes. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with Mom on Purpose listeners? Um, Jess, I would just like to pray for the women because I remember so much what it was like to be a young mom, and it's not easy. And it's, I I can remember feeling sometimes when I heard someone say something about intimacy, you can just go, oh, another thing to do. Yes. But I don't yes. want them to think about it like that. So I just would like to pray for them. Wonderful. Father God, I just thank you for every precious mom who is listening today. I thank you that they have chosen to want to be moms on purpose. I thank you for Jess, 
who is leading them to want to be moms on purpose. God, what a wonderful, what a wonderful thing to say and to want to be. But God, you want us to be wives on purpose too. And you want us to be lovers on purpose Mm. because you have given us intimacy as a gift. And Lord, I just ask you to reveal to each of these precious moms how intimacy is a gift. And I ask you to take her to your word and transform her mind so she can see all you have in this gift for her and for her husband. And I thank you that you will do this. And I praise you in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Linda. I have loved our conversation, and I um, I just pray God's blessings on you. I would love to do this again. <laughs> this has been so fun. Me too. <laughs> I loved it. Mm. Thank you so much for the joy. Mm. It was really a joy. Yes. Mm. All right, Mom on Purpose listeners, that interview wraps up season two of the Mom on Purpose podcast. I would ask you to do two things. Number one, if you would share this podcast, go back and listen to the episodes that have been helpful for you and share them with your friends, with your circle of sisters in Christ in your local church and around the world. That would be a blessing to me. But also, would you pray for me and see what God will do with this podcast? Over the summer, I'm going to be spending time really leaning in to discern where God would have me spend my time. And so I welcome your feedback, and I really would welcome your prayers. Thanks for listening to the Mom on Purpose podcast. For more information and all links and show notes, go to momonpurpose.com. You can make a huge difference in how many women find and benefit from this podcast. Please like Mom on Purpose on iTunes and take two minutes to leave a review. I'll meet you again next time to equip you to be a mom on purpose.